So here we are, two days before the end of the month, the year, and the decade, which is probably as good a time as any to reflect on the mistakes that we have made. Now, for this video, of course, we are referring to the mistakes that we have made in the conveyance of information discussed on this channel in the videos we produce for our audience every week. You can reflect on your personal shortcomings in your own time. Now, this may not be a particularly interesting video. We are not learning about the inner workings of a new country or looking at some obscure business function or economic scheme. Instead, we are re-evaluating what we have learnt thus far. But this is a very important video because all information should be scrutinised to some degree by anybody learning it. This whole process is called peer review. In every single video produced by Economics Explained, you will find a list of references that were used directly to produce the video you saw. These are all scholarly articles, books, or papers, which means at some point they have all been scrutinised by the author's peers, which are normally university professors, researchers, or academics with deep understanding on the subject matter. Oftentimes, papers like this cannot be published until they pass a scrutiny check of these academics, and this means that when people like the team at Economic Explained pick them up and read them, we can be pretty confident that the information contained in them is accurate and the arguments that they present are well-founded. In a certain sense, we ourselves go through our own peer review process. Whenever we upload a video, hundreds of thousands of people will watch it and bring with them a wide array of skills and knowledge, well beyond what could even be known by an individual or a team. And in many circumstances, and despite our best efforts to put together accurate and informative videos, mistakes have been made, and you guys called us out on it. So, here in this video, in the interest of making sure that everybody is learning, we will address those mistakes and set things right. The first and generally most common mistakes are those that are just silly errors. They don't come from misinterpreting data or using biased sources or even fundamental understanding errors. They just come from being a dunce. By far the most controversial of these mistakes was the one that we made in our video when we were exploring the Canadian economy. And I am not talking about the people making fun of the very Australian way that I say Canada. I am talking about this map here. Canada is great and a very large country and all, but it does not own Alaska. That belongs to the United States after they purchased it from Russia in 1867. So there we go. A similar mistake was made with the Netherlands, who apparently now has invaded a little bit of France. So let's fix that up too. The next mistake was from a more recent video, part one of our series on the Chinese economy. It is important to note that China did not loose their throne, they lost their throne. Oops. In our video on the 50 largest economies in the world briefly summarised, we accidentally cut number 41, 44, and 47 in editing. In our video on the economics of automation, we explored what extreme wealth inequality could mean and gave the nation of Johannesburg as an example. Johannesburg is not a nation, it is a city inside South Africa. Finally, in our first video on the economy of EVE Online, we explored the Imperium, an in-game coalition of players that had formed their own player nation, and we were looking to calculate their GDP. Part of this GDP was the calculation of household consumption, which was the sum of 32 trillion and 48.6 trillion ISK, the in-game currency. Now, for anybody that has done maths beyond the third grade, you will be able to discern that this equals 80.6 trillion ISK not the 90.6 trillion we stated in the video. This one is important as well because it carried this error forward for our final GDP calculation, which are now 120 trillion ISK less than the final figure we calculated annually. Now, all of these mistakes are pretty benign. They are very obviously silly oversights or fault of human error. It is unlikely that anybody will take this information and use it in such a way as to produce anything or teach someone something that is fundamentally untrue, not useful, or non-productive. But it is still important to recognise and correct it, even if it is just for a good laugh. When you are conducting research, it is important to gather information from reliable resources that have themselves gathered information from reliable resources, building an ecosystem of reliable studies to build future research on top of. In science, you don't want to be doing cutting-edge rocket propulsion research based on pre-Newtonian notions of movement. Similarly, you don't want to be creating economic policies that could dictate the decisions of nations based off economic theories that have been shown to be as inaccurate as geocentrism. Now, the team at Economics Explained actually spend a majority of our time researching content from the videos from the sources that we determine to be reliable. These papers can be rather dry and boring, and if I'm perfectly honest, a lot of them are purely academic papers that are meant to be read by experts on the issue and don't represent data in a very entertaining way. This means that when a script is written for a video, we have to take special care to add a bit of 
flair to the whole process, so that it sounds a little bit more engaging for our viewers who are more or less likely looking for a basic understanding of the issue. This often means that things are lost in that translation. A classic example of this was the economy of Australia, where we were exploring the Australian system for retirement funds called superannuation. Now, of all things to get wrong, it was this. I am an Australian working in the finance industry in Australia. And even I made this mistake by saying, this contribution is taken before taxes, meaning that most Australians are actually pretty happy with this arrangement because it's a tax efficient way to save for retirement, which is strictly not true. Sure, Superannuation is actually taken out of your paycheck before taxation, but the contributions towards super are taxed at a 15% flat rate. So it technically wasn't incorrect, but it certainly could have been better explained. A similar issue came up when we were exploring the economy of Monaco. Here we were looking at how Monaco levies taxes through its value added tax, and I said that Monaco's tax rate was one of the highest in the world for such a tax. Again, this isn't technically wrong but it was probably a bit misleading. While a lot of nations out there have no sales taxes at all, and a majority of the countries have lower sales taxes than Monaco, the 19.6% tax rate that the Monegas government levies on sales in the country does put it up there, but it is far, far lower than some other sales taxes in other European nations. Mistakes like these are important to address because it's the kind of information that people could take as fact and take action against in ways that would not produce ideal outcomes. No sources, no matter how stringently they are peer reviewed and scrutinized by colleagues, are ever flawless. They are subject to the same human errors that we have seen before, and also bias. Even in peer reviewed publications, you will find that the peers that are reviewing these publications are just that, peers of the authors. Oftentimes, that means that they are from the same schools, and in many cases, they are workmates, or student and teacher, or even teacher and student, which leaves them open to collective biases. I will be the first to admit my own bias. I was taught Keynesian economics in high school and then in my undergraduate and honours degree, and even in postgraduate degrees at Australian universities, any other school of economic thought is seen as a minor triviality akin to a medical student learning about Chinese healing, which is of course, not fair. The team tries very hard to avoid these biases when producing information, but sometimes it still creeps in. This is most evident in three videos that have been published by the channel. The first two were the first two videos ever released by Economics Explained, back when it was just me translating old university papers into video essays. These videos explored neoclassical economic theory dubbed as trickle-down economics, and they were not a fair representation of the content matter at all. All of the sources utilised were from critics of the theory, and they were written exclusively by myself, who has again been educated to be critical of such an economic theory. Now, this is not to say I or the team at Economics Explained supports neoclassical economics all of a sudden, but the subject is very interesting and there are two sides to every debate, and the whole issue deserves a less slanderous approach that gives a balanced view of the pros and cons from each side of the debate represented by academics from both sides. Because of this and the higher standards we aim to hold this channel to, these videos will be deleted on the 1st of January 2020, and the topic will be re-explored better in the future. This kind of biased information also impacted the video on Bernie Sanders. Now we knew that Sanders was going to be a controversial issue, and we did expect backlash on the grounds of political disagreement. Now what was worrisome is that a lot of the criticisms were not of Sanders himself or even his politics, but rather a lot of this information was being misrepresented by the video. In hindsight, and in an attempt to stay as neutral as possible, when we were exploring the economics of political candidates, we focused primarily on their positives. In the case of Bernie though, we combined this with a poor selection of background reading, and we did not really do his case, or any case, any favours for or against. So, just the same as the video on trickle down economics, we will be deleting this at the start of the new year. Now, there are probably dozens of other mistakes in all of our other videos that have so far flown under the radar but there is one thing that we get called out on more than anything, and that is my insistence on the use of the words now and but. So, just for you guys, enjoy. Now, and now, but, but, but. Now, 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 now. I wanna finish this video off by saying how grateful I am for everybody that watches these videos. From the people that just watch and enjoy, to the likers and subscribers, the people that leave comments of praise and encouragement, 
our all important new patrons over on Patreon, eh? And even the critics that are surprisingly civil and constructive for our YouTube comment section. These videos were originally started because I miss researching new and interesting things every week when I left university, and this was a great outlet to do so. Today, we have just passed over 200,000 subscribers, and we have a flourishing Discord server filled with students, professors, and everyday people who are just interested in discussing economics. This is more than we could have ever hoped for, and without sounding sappy, we hope that you will all continue to participate so actively in the community that we have created into the new year. So Happy New Year, everyone. Thanks, guys. Bye.